So there's a rumor going around town that some of you are scared of cast iron pans. Is this true? I don't know why y'all are afraid of it, but I'm here today to show you that you don't have to be afraid of it. I'm gonna show you how you cook in it. I'm gonna show you how you clean it. I'm gonna show you how to take care of it. And I'm gonna show you how to season it. But really, it's much easier than you think to own and take care of a cast iron pan. So why do I love this cast iron pan so much? because it's affordable, it can last you lifetimes if you take care of it, and you can practically cook anything in it. For someone who doesn't like specialized gadgets or unitaskers, the cast iron pan is one of the most intensely hardworking workhorses in the kitchen. That's a nice tune. The cast iron pan is really just one solid piece of metal, meaning it's very, very, durable. If you do end up shattering it or, you know, like blasting a bullet through it, it might shatter. But otherwise, in a normal kitchen circumstance, it probably will not break. Unlike nonstick pans, you can transfer the cast iron from stove to oven in one fell swoop and it's totally food safe. While cast iron is not great at conducting heat evenly, it retains heat super well, which means that nice golden bottom is yours to have. Cast iron also has this intimidation factor where you're always afraid that your food is gonna get stuck to it when you cook in it. Unlike non-stick pans, cast iron pans don't have a coating that ensures a clean release. All that means is it depends on the quality of your seasoning and the amount of fat that you're using in your cooking to let that food slide right out of the pan. Please don't be stingy when you're cooking in your cast iron with your fats. Do you always have trouble flipping that pancake upside down, getting both sides nice and golden brown? No more. Today is a day we make some dank pancakes in our cast iron pan. looks about right. If your pan isn't even too gunky by the end of your cooking session and you're about to cook another thing, you don't even need to wash it. Take a paper towel, wipe it out, good to go. I don't like to cook a lot of meat, but I do like to roast veggies from time to time and I sometimes like to start off my veggies on the stove and transfer them into the oven for a nice, tender, creamy finish. One of my favorite things to make in the cast iron pan Because it is one solid piece of metal and it's great at retaining heat, you have to be careful. Use a towel when you're handling your pan so that you don't burn your hands. Once your oven is preheated and your potatoes are nice and golden, go ahead and just transfer them to the oven. If you drop in your stuff before the pan is completely hot, it might have a slightly elevated risk of being sticky. So my best bet is just to let the pan heat up completely first. That being said, when you have enough oil in your pan, it should release just fine. One advice I have for you when cooking with cast iron on the stovetop is to move your pan around on your fire a little bit. To ensure even heating, move your pan around on the heat source so that every bit of that pan is getting nice amounts of heat applied. Is that nonstick enough for you? Perfect eggs every time. You got the crispy, crispy bottoms and you got the nice runny yolks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
I don't know if you've heard the same rumors as I have, but some people think you can't cook anything acidic in cast iron, including tomatoes, tomato sauce, and I'm here to tell you today, that ain't true. The belief is that because of the increased acidity in tomatoes, they wear away at the cast iron and they can corrode them or the metallic taste will leach into your food, which in my experience has not been true. But of course, if you cook tomatoes for an hour plus in cast iron, I can't vouch for that. I think at half an hour, 45 minutes, even an hour, it should be totally okay. Unlike nonstick, you can use wooden utensils, you can use silicone spatulas, you can use metal on cast iron. They won't scratch unless you're no intentionally chipping away your pan, which please don't do. But metal is perfectly safe on cast iron pans. I truly have no idea what I'm making there, but you get my point. You know. Food. I threw in a couple of eggs in there just to show you what happens when your food does indeed get stuck to the cast iron pan. Stickage usually happens when you have two things going on, probably at the same time. One, you didn't use enough fat to lubricate that pan and create that nice little barrier. And two, you are cooking something that has a lot of protein and moisture in it. Whatever you do, do not continuously shovel at it hoping that it releases while your heat is still on. As soon as you see stickage starting to happen, turn your heat off. And if you can, cover your pan so that you're trapping all of the moisture that is still in your batch of food. Let it rest for a couple of minutes and over time that moisture will kind of just rain down to the bottom of the pan and then after a few minutes, unlid, give it a nice gentle scrape with a wooden spoon and see if it comes off. Again, I'm not quite sure what I made here, but it looks pretty edible, guys. And just in case you're wondering if there's a taste of cast iron in here, Mm -mm. No cast iron here, but it does taste damn delicious. So once you got a dirty pan, how do you clean it? In most cases, I like to go in with really hot tap water and a scrubby, not even soap. Soap is unnecessary unless you have extreme grime in there. You're really, really disgusting and worn out scrubby on that really old sponge is actually perfect for cleaning cast irons because this has a little bit of abrasiveness not too much. There's still a little bit of residue, so we'll put on a little bit of salt and go in with our toothbrush. Stiff toothbrushes are fantastic for scrubbing at those hard to reach spots, and it really gives you some leverage to really work in those little stickies that just refuse to come off. Because toothbrushes are still made for human teeth, they probably won't be harsh enough to ruin your seasoning. Soap will not strip off your seasoning, but just don't use any harsh scrubbies to really get at those corners and stickies. Another commonly asked question is, can I let my cast iron pan soak? My answer is yes, but not for too long. Soaking does great wonders for lifting food particles off, so if that means you have to scrub it less later, then yes, let it soak. I like to do maybe a 10 to 15 minute soak max. Rinse it off in nice hot water and shake off all of your moisture and you're done, right? Wrong. Because cast iron is porous and it is basically just metal, it can rust. So to ensure that your cast iron is actually dry and that it does not rust while you store it, you gotta put it on your stove top and heat it off. I like to do a nice solid medium high heat and I'm going to look for wisps of smoke from that pan. Initially, the water droplets will evaporate and sizzle away, but you really want to get that pan hot enough that you can start to smell the metal just a little bit. I don't know about you, but that seems like a pretty manageable cleanup routine to me. At this stage, you can take it one step further and you can apply a very thin layer of oil on there while the pan is still hot. One thing to note here is you don't want a whole lot of oil. You actually just want the barest amount of oil on there and you want to buff it out with a nice little paper towel. Really go ahead and spread it all over the pan and if you really want to be a good cast iron pan owner, spread it on the underside too. 
As you can see, I didn't spread it on the underside and it is rusty. But it's okay, because we're not cooking on that side, guys. You want to be working this in so that it doesn't even look oily. It just looks like a very nice matte sheen. A lot of people ask me what brand of cast iron to get and uh, it really doesn't matter, guys. I don't even know what brand I have here. It just says Taiwan on the bottom and it truly has no other insignia, so uh, beats me. Sexy, huh? If you ever see that your pan did rust while in storage, don't freak out. It is fine, it's easy to take care of. As you can see, I just buffed it with a paper towel and most of the rust is pretty much gone now. If your rust happens inside your pot, just be sure that you're rinsing it all out and you're giving it a nice scrub so that you remove all of the rust first before proceeding on to oiling and seasoning. No, it does not mean salting it and peppering it and putting delicious spices in it. What it refers to is this nice thin layer of oil that we just applied. To grow your seasoning or to maintain your seasoning on your pan, you basically have to apply heat to it so that the oil you put on there hits its smoking point and polymerizes. That means that essentially your oil is being cooked to such a high temperature that it turns into a thin layer of plasticky coating. In essence, you're making your own non-stick pan through the seasoning process. Some cooks believe that it's a really good idea that when you first get your cast iron pan that you season it well. Because while most pans come pre-seasoned, it's a very loose layer of commercial seasoning. And if you really want to give your pan that nice TLC, you got to do it yourself. Do you have to season your pan every time you cook? Absolutely not. That last step of oiling it, I don't even do that maybe every month. I just did it for you guys, to show you guys. I just, I'm not a good cast iron mother. But as you can see, even with plenty of abuse, it's still fine, guys. What you really don't want to do is put too much oil on there because what happens is this. This happens when you put too much oil on. We got too greedy with the seasoning and we went on really thick with the oils and then when we heated it up in the oven, it started flaking. Why? Because that thick layer of oil turned into that plastic polymerized state and started flaking. It wasn't just a nice baked in layer, it basically sat on top of the pan and as you cook with it, it's very fragile and it will start flaking. So don't be greedy. Just go light. If you want to season your pan, you can do so by applying that layer of oil like we just did, buffing it in, and then turning your oven up to 475, 500 degrees, really hot, sliding your pan in there, and letting it bake for about an hour. After that hour is up, I recommend you turn off the oven and leave the pan in there to cool with the oven as it cools. That way you're using every last bit of energy to make sure that seasoning is nice and baked in. I won't be showing you that process today because one, my pan is pretty good looking, I would say, no. And two, because I have a cat named Fred who is unfortunately asthmatic. So that is something to note, that when you season your cast iron pan in the oven, it will create a very smoky atmosphere in your kitchen or house. This is because the whole point of seasoning is to let that oil hit past its smoking point so that it can polymerize. If you don't hit past that smoking point, it's not turning into that layer of coating, aka seasoning. So be prepared and keep your kitchen very well ventilated. And if you have people or animals who suffer from asthma, just take dear note of that. Please don't stress about getting that nice, perfect magazine ready seasoning on your cast iron pan because seasoning will come with time. Every time you cook in your pan, that's a layer of seasoning. You don't need to clean that much, guys. To me, the cast iron pan is amazing and it's super easy to take care of. It's really not high maintenance at all. I hope you found this video helpful and useful and I want you to let me know what other explainers would you like to see. I'm open to talking about everything.